Imagine looking up at the sky and knowing that one day, the sun, the star that gives us life, will become something else. It won't always be that calm golden light we see each day. No, one day it'll expand into a burning giant, a swelling inferno of gas and fire. And when that day comes, it will consume the planets that have quietly circled it for billions of years. The first to fall will be Mercury. But here's the strange part. Mercury might not vanish right away. Even after it's swallowed by the sun, it could still be there, orbiting, drifting through a sea of thin, glowing plasma. A ghost caught in motion. A silent dance where gravity and light begin to blur. So now we have to ask, could a planet actually survive inside a star? And if it could, would it still be a planet? Let's pause here and look a little deeper. Because this is Astro, where we don't just explore space, we dive into the fabric of reality, into time itself, and the strange beauty hiding in cosmic paradoxes. Today, we're following a haunting question. What really happens when a planet gets eaten by the sun? We often think of the sun as something eternal. Day after day, it rises, without fail, steady, constant, comforting. But like every star in the universe, the sun has a lifespan, and its ending won't come in a flash. Not a sudden explosion, but something slower, unstoppable. A long, burning farewell that will erase the very solar system it once nurtured. Right now, the sun is in its calmest state. Deep in the core, nuclear fusion continues. Hydrogen turns into helium. And in the process, vast energy is released. But that fuel won't last forever. In about 5 billion years, the core's hydrogen will run out. And when it does, everything begins to change. The sun will start to expand. And not just a little. From a diameter of around 870,000 miles, that's about 1.4 million kilometers, it will balloon to more than 100 times its current size. It may even stretch as far as Earth's orbit. At that point, it becomes what we call a red giant. Its outer layers will swell and cool. It'll glow dimmer, redder, but also larger than ever before. And as it transforms, the inner planets will be swallowed one by one. Mercury will be the first. But here's the twist. This isn't some quick, fiery end. The sun's evolution into a red giant takes millions of years. During that time, it sheds mass. Powerful solar winds blow matter into space. And the sun's grip on its planets weakens. One by one, the planets begin to drift. Like dancers trying to follow music, as the rhythm starts to fall apart. Now picture living in that era. The sky above wouldn't be blue. It would burn with a reddish glow. Yiri, haunting. The sun would dominate the horizon. It could cover half the sky. And you'd feel it growing closer with every passing millennium. Would that feel like the end of everything? Or the rebirth of a star? Let's follow Mercury now, as it begins its descent into the burning heart of the star that once gave it life. Because what happens inside the sun might be even stranger than its death. When we think about a planet falling into a star, our minds jump to fire, to explosions, to something sudden, violent a blinding flash, a cosmic firework. But in truth, what really happens is far more subtle and far stranger. Imagine this, you're standing on the surface of Mercury in its final moment. The sky no longer fades into a black infinity. Instead, it glows. A burning sea of light rising slowly, relentlessly, and then it reaches you, not with a bang, but with silence, 
A wave of plasma, almost invisible, washes over everything. And yet, you're still there. Because here's what's unexpected. The outer layers of the sun, for all their light, are surprisingly thin. They're made of plasma. But that plasma is less dense than even the highest layers of Earth's atmosphere. So when Mercury enters the sun, it doesn't crash into a wall of heat. It slips inside, like a stone sinking into a glowing ocean. And deep within that ocean of light, Mercury keeps orbiting. It becomes a ghost, drifting through the very heart of a star. It doesn't vanish, not instantly. Instead, it begins to unravel. Its rocky crust starts to melt. Its iron core begins to vaporize. But this isn't the end. Not yet. This slow decay could take tens of thousands of years. Maybe hundreds of thousands. Think of it this way. Picture Mercury as a lost spacecraft, skimming the upper atmosphere of a gas giant. Friction pulls at it. Not all at once, but gently, persistently, dragging it down, piece by piece, until there's nothing left but a fading trace, a flicker in the fire. Is there anything more haunting than a slow death? Still orbiting, still moving, inside the very star that's consuming you. But Mercury's journey isn't quite finished, because the deeper it falls, the hotter it gets, the pressure builds, the resistance rises, and finally, after its long ghostly spiral, Mercury is gone, completely. Once Mercury crosses the threshold and enters the sun's outer shell of plasma, the question isn't if it will be destroyed, it's how, and the answer is slow peaceful, almost meditative. At this stage, Mercury becomes something ancient, something lonely, a single fragment of matter adrift in a sea of fire. But this isn't fire as we know it, not the kind that crackles and burns. It's plasma, a storm of charged particles, swirling, blazing at millions of degrees, and from deep within the sun, an invisible pressure begins to crush in. That's when friction takes over. Not a violent impact, but something more patient, more precise. A kind of cosmic erosion, grain by grain, atom by atom. Mercury is stripped down. Its surface wears away, pulled apart by powerful currents, torn by waves of stellar convection. And with each orbit, it falls deeper the heat intensifies, the pressure mounts, its path tightens like a noose slowly closing. Some models suggest this spiral could last for hundreds of thousands of years. Imagine that, a planet dissolving like a screw, twisting endlessly into molten wood. Over time, Mercury loses itself. Its form begins to stretch, its structure melts, its atoms vaporize. It becomes a cloud, a fading echo of what once was, a planetary ghost circling the core of a dying star. And from the outside, you might never notice. No flash, no explosion, no sudden light to mark the end, just absence, a planet that once existed. And then, it didn't. But if you were Mercury, you might not know you were gone. You'd still feel the motion, still feel the orbit, until, piece by piece, molecule by molecule, you're unraveled, melted, stretched, folded into the sun's very heart. The same star that gave you light now swallows your last trace. But here's a thought that lingers. What if it's not just Mercury? What if... Earth is destined to follow the same path. As the sun begins to expand into a red giant, something else starts to happen. It's not just growing in size, it's losing mass, 
every second. Intense solar winds carry millions of tons of material into space. And with every particle that escapes, the sun's gravitational grip weakens. For billions of years, that gravity held the planets in place. But now, everything begins to shift. And for Earth, this sets up a delicate, almost poetic paradox. The sun's pull is fading, pushing Earth outward. But at the same time, the sun itself is growing. Its outer layers swell, reaching farther with every passing age. It's like two dancers circling one another, moving closer, but never quite knowing who will make the final move. Some simulations suggest Earth might slip away just enough to escape the fate of Mercury. It might stay outside the sun's reach, spared from the fire, but in other scenarios, the line is thin. All it takes is a tiny shift, a little more drag from the sun's expanding atmosphere, a small nudge in Earth's momentum, and we're caught, dragged in, and swallowed. And if that happens, our world will follow Mercury's path. It will spiral inward and slowly come undone inside the very star that once gave it life. But even if we're lucky, even if we avoid being swallowed, Earth will still be lost because long before the sun reaches us, its growing heat will do the work. The oceans will boil, the skies will thin, our atmosphere will peel away layer by layer, and with it, go the last traces of life and the final echoes of everything we ever were. It won't happen in a day, not in a year, but over millions of years, our planet will change. And if you were alive then, you would see it happening. The sky would grow brighter, sunsets would come too soon, and daylight would burn too much to bear. And you might find yourself asking, are we stepping into heaven or entering a furnace? But that is only the surface of the story, because the strangest question still remains. Can a planet truly exist inside a star? When we picture a planet being swallowed by its star, we imagine destruction, a sudden end, a violent collapse, a dramatic flash, and then silence. But Mercury tells a different story. It invites us to ask something deeper, something quieter. Can the death of a planet be gentle? Because Mercury might remain for hundreds of thousands of years, not as a planet in the way we understand, but as a silent satellite, drifting deep inside the sun, not completely destroyed, not truly alive just there, a ghost of matter, looping endlessly through burning silence. And in that silence, a strange kind of beauty, a paradox only the universe could write, where something that should have vanished lingers, not because it resists, but because it endures through patience, through motion, as if Mercury is telling one last story with one last orbit before it fades into heat, into light, and finally into nothing. And maybe this is more than just a physical event. Maybe it's a metaphor, a message written in gravity and time, that sometimes the end doesn't come with a bang. Sometimes it's a curve, a slow spiral inward, the soft glow of a final revolution. So ask yourself, what if one day Earth does the same. What if our world, our home, is drawn inward into the heart of a dying star? What if we, too, disappear into light? And if that's possible here, what about all the other planets? Circling stars will never reach? How many are vanishing right now? In silence? If this journey moved you, if it sparked wonder or left you with questions, then subscribe. There are more stories waiting from the edge of space and the depths of time.